You are going to die. I'm sorry if that came as a shock to you, but sooner or later it's gonna happen to all of us. Around 150,000 people die every day, coming to a total of about 55 million every year. But don't freak out. After it's happened, you won't even realize it. That's kind of comforting, right? Well, unless you suffer from the Cotard delusion, also known as Cotard syndrome and the slightly more dramatic walking corpse syndrome. If you're one of the tiny percentage of people who suffer from this mental condition, you believe you're dead long before you actually die. That's right, the Cotard delusion is an extremely rare mental disorder that causes a number of strange symptoms. Today we're going to talk about what it exactly is, how you can diagnose it, and some stories from real people who suffered from the disease. First, the symptoms. One major sign of experiencing the Cotard delusion is a sense of severe nihilism. No, we're not talking Nietzsche and Rick Sanchez. We're talking a completely lack of existential meaning. People suffering from the Cotard delusion might believe that nothing around them truly exists, including themselves. This is also known as existential skepticism. This is not to be confused with solipsism, wherein the sufferer believes they and they alone exist. People with the Kotar delusion can believe everything from the fact that they are currently dying or rotting away to the idea that they never even existed in the first place. Despite being so rare, the Kotar delusion is a surprisingly wide umbrella. While some believe that the whole of them is dead or missing in action, for others it's a lot more selective. They believe parts of them are missing, failing, or disappearing such as limbs, internal organs, or even more intangible aspects of the self, like the mind or the soul. It's a disease full of contradictions, with sufferers believing they're alternately immortal and already dead. This can be dangerous as sufferers start to neglect some of the basic activities we need to survive, like eating, drinking, performing basic hygiene, and sleeping. After all, why worry about your health when you're dead already, right? Sufferers can believe that they've transitioned into a kind of highly disappointing afterlife that just happens to look a whole lot like their previous life. Some also believe they're wandering ghosts who don't belong on the mortal plane, and other people just haven't realized it yet. Sixth Sense Style Many believe that they're just straight up living zombies, shambling across the earth and waiting to fall apart. In 2008, a 53-year-old woman suffering from the Kotar delusion even asked to be taken to the local morgue where she'd feel more at home with the other corpses. But the whole being dead thing isn't the only symptom of the Kotar delusion. It's actually a pretty complex symptomatic web, comorbid with a number of other more common mental disorders. People with the Kotar delusion are also likely to experience a mounting sense of anxiety and dread that naturally accompanies feelings of impending death. For this same reason, they're also likely to experience a sense of severe depression. People with the condition are also likely to feel an overwhelming sense of guilt that they don't fully understand, as well as hypochondria or health anxiety that makes them believe they're suffering from various make-believe ailments. This can sometimes even extend to straight-up visual and auditory hallucinations, such as some cases reporting voices in their head telling them that they've died or were about to die. Another more serious issue is that people experiencing the Kotar delusion have a tendency towards self-harm and suicidal ideation. For many people suffering from the disease, life can feel either utterly pointless or extremely confusing and distressing. Sufferers may self-harm in order to test whether they can experience sensation, to cut rotting or diseased parts of themselves, or simply to hasten the process of dying for real. If not treated, having a protracted bout of the Kotar delusion can lead to serious real-life consequences. In most cases, the disease progresses in three distinct stages, germination, blooming, and chronic. In stage 1, the germination stage, the victim experiences the psychotic depression and hypochondria. In the second stage, the blooming stage, the victim will develop the full-blown Kotar delusion complete with all the nasty side effects. In the final stage, known as the chronic stage, after having the illness for some time, the victim experiences the most severe delusional thought patterns, chronic depression, social withdrawal, and a complete split from reality. Needless to say, this is not a pleasant process to experience firsthand. So, at this point you're probably wondering, how exactly does one get the Kotar delusion? How was something so strange and rare even discovered? And is there any way to treat it? Well, the Kotar delusion often comes as a package deal with other physical and mental conditions. Though in a few exceptional cases it's manifested as an adverse reaction to the herpes medication acyclovir. Psychological risk factors include suffering from bipolar disorder, postpartum depression, catatonia, schizophrenia, psychotic depression, disassociative disorder, and depersonalization disorder. 
While once again the condition is extremely rare, people suffering from those disorders do incur a greater probability of falling victim to the Kotark delusion. The same goes for the people experiencing the following physical ailments, traumatic brain damage, strokes, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, severe migraines, epilepsy, dementia, brain infections, and brain tumors. It's highly unlikely you'll develop the Kotar delusion if you don't take at least one of the aforementioned boxes. Statistically, sufferers of the Kotar delusion are also typically older than age 50, though cases presenting in younger people aren't unheard of. The sheer rareness of the Kotar delusion makes it extremely difficult to identify and diagnose in most cases. In fact, so few people have been affected that it's hard to accurately say how many people are presently suffering from the condition worldwide though some experts say the number is probably around 200. In terms of diagnosis, because the Kotar delusion isn't technically an official psychiatric designation, the conclusion is typically reached by simply ruling out every other possible option. Normally, the idea of the Kotar delusion is more diagnostically useful as a symptom for some of the conditions we were talking about earlier, rather than as a disease in and of itself. And this begs the question, how does such an insanely rare condition ever become known in the first place, rather than just slipping through the cracks of medical history? Well, for that we can thank 19th century French psychiatric doctor Jules Cotard. One day a woman with the pseudonym Mademoiselle X wandered into Dr. Cotard's practice with a series of strange symptoms, anxiety, depression, and ah, the belief that she was somehow already dead. Naturally, such a strange condition interested the doctor, so he decided to look into the case further. Mademoiselle X believes she had no internal organs, no central nervous system, and no torso. You may be thinking, how could someone not believe they have a torso? It's a pretty hard body part to miss. People suffering from the Kotar delusion are aware that the body parts are technically physically there, but they don't perceive those pieces as really living. If this is wrecking your brain, don't worry about it. As a form of delusional psychosis, the Kotar delusion doesn't exactly follow conventional logic. Delusions will only truly make sense to the sufferer. Mademoiselle X, for example, was fully convinced that she had been cursed with a kind of half-life immortality. She was simultaneously dead and not dead, like ghostly pirates in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Another strange belief that Mademoiselle X seemed to harbor was that her stomach had died inside her. She had no physical ailments that would indicate this, but her belief in the death of her stomach was so powerful, she just stopped eating. As a result, she died for real of some pretty horrific starvation before Dr. Kotar could properly treat her. The doctor referred to the strange condition that had taken Mademoiselle X's life as delirium of negation, though the disease would go on to become far more synonymous with the doctor's name. Much like this sad story of Mademoiselle X, case studies of people suffering from the Kotar delusion are often a mix of tragic and absurd. One of the first recorded cases of what would later be dubbed the Kotar delusion actually occurred around 100 years before Dr. Kotar's run-in with Mademoiselle X. Genevian writer Charles Bonnet encountered a strange case that seemed extremely consistent with later accounts of the condition. Bonnet recounted the story of an old woman who became mysteriously paralyzed on one side of her body in what was probably a minor stroke. When she regained the ability to move and talk, she demanded to be dressed in burial shroud and placed in the coffin, believing herself to be dead. She pestered her family about her apparent deadness for so long, they eventually caved and held a mock funeral for her. Afterwards, when she was treated with a placebo made from opium and precious stones, she finally seemed to return back to normal, though she lapsed again every few months after that, proving that heroin and opal dust probably isn't an effective replacement for proper psychiatric help. Though there were a few scattered cases throughout the past few hundred years, another significant recorded instance occurred in Scotland in 1996. A Scottish man had experienced a severe traumatic head injury during a motorcycle accident, causing him to develop the Kotar delusion. He believed he'd actually died during the process of recovery from his injuries and was now in the afterlife. He and his mother moved to South Africa shortly afterwards, and because of the sudden increase in temperature, the man believed he'd gone to hell. In 2003, Greek psychiatrists had a strange case on their hands with a suicidal man who believed that his head was literally completely empty. The man had previously attempted suicide because he felt life wasn't worth living without a mind. After resisting treatment for a year, he was readmitted to the hospital for a course of therapy and medication and thankfully experienced sustained improvement. In 2005, an Iranian man experienced the deeply weird combination of the Kotar delusion and clinical lycanthropy. The belief was that he had become or is becoming an animal. The unnamed 32-year-old man went to the hospital and told doctors that he was both dead and somehow transformed into a dog. What's more, he believed that his three daughters had died 
and become sheep in the process, a delusion apparently inspired by his deep guilt about having sexual contact with a sheep in the past. While at face value this man probably seems like a lost cause, he was actually successfully treated and is now doing much better. Finally, in 2012, a Japanese man suffering from the Kotar delusion entered a hospital and said to one of the doctors there, I guess I'm dead, I'd like to ask for your opinion. The man was suffering from a right hemisphere infarction in the brain, which was causing his delusions. The doctor told him that the mere fact that he was there and speaking to them surely proved he was alive. The man recognized the inconsistency but continued to believe he was dead anyway. After treatment, the man made a full recovery, but maintained his belief that he was dead for a period of time, saying, now I am alive, but I was once dead at that time. I guess you have to admire his consistency. Something you've probably noticed in these cases is that most sufferers of the Kotar delusion fully recover when they undergo the proper treatment, and thankfully that's often the case. Because the Kotar delusion is mostly the result of an underlying condition, when that condition is treated, the Kotar symptoms often disappear with it. The most common method of treating the Kotar delusion is with electroconvulsive therapy or ECT, though other treatments consist of medication like antidepressants and antipsychotics, and talk therapy like cognitive behavioral therapy and psychotherapy. Some of the most successful treatments of the condition often feature a little of each. The Kotar delusion is one of the rarest and strangest psychological conditions out there, but that doesn't make it any less interesting. In a sense, people who've experienced the condition are lucky. After all, we're all going to die someday, and at least they're going in with experience. Thanks for watching this episode of the Infographic Show. We can guarantee you'll never feel like a zombie when you're watching our fascinating videos about strange psychological conditions, like weirdest brain disorders, and why do people with schizophrenia see things? Schizophrenia Explained.